I've moved more than pretty much anybody I've ever met, and I think I have got some pretty valuable tips, especially if you want to do it all yourself. So let's jump in and talk about that right after we rock out for just a minute with Rocksmith Plus. I know it hurts a little bit from all the headbanging because I've been playing Rocksmith Plus all week. A new game from Ubisoft. They are sponsoring this video. Thank you very much. You can subscribe to Rocksmith Plus. Uh, the link is in the top of the description. It's getrocksmith.com. So if you played like a lot of the rhythm games like Guitar Hero and stuff like that, and you want to translate some of that energy into playing an actual instrument, that's what Rocksmith is. They made it really easy to just jump in and start learning how to play the guitar. And there's 5,000 songs already in there, like rock and hip hop and metal and country and R&B and Latin and classical. There's also a lot of heavy stuff in here, bands like Death, Into Eternity, Opeth. Uh, here's me playing a little bit of classical music. So far there's been 5 million people who have used this as a tool to learn. 95% report improvement in their skills. There's no way, which is like very similar to what you'd see on a lot of the other rhythm games out there, but there's also tablature, so you have that option. I turn that on and it's more intuitive for my brain since I already play the guitar. You can use any guitar you like. Before you had to use a USB cable, which I highly recommend. You get a USB cable plugged into your computer and on the other end it plugs into your guitar and then you can play it. Now there's also a new way using Rocksmith Plus Connect. You hook up your phone and it uses the phone's microphone to listen to what you're doing. So you no longer need the fancy guitar cable to plug into your USB. You can do it either way you like. So it's pretty cool. They had some like progression tracking uh, stuff going on where they show you where you need to improve and what you can do. And there's also a learning center. I think people should spend a lot of time in the learning center because it just develops finesse, you know, like doing scales and stuff like that. Stuff that you would normally need to learn, but it gamifies it so you can see the improvements and it sort of customizes the experience so that you can improve the areas that you need to improve. So let me know in the comments what songs you're going to be learning in Rocksmith Plus. Moving is one of the worst things on the planet. And whenever you have a friend who's like, hey, I'd love to help you move, grab them and hold on to them and never let them get away. But a lot of times they have no idea what they're about to get themselves into. I'm going to use some random footage and random b-roll in this video. I'll try not to make it too excessive, but it, it'll be kind of funny and silly. You know, I couldn't really videotape my own move because that's personal information. Got a lot of my personal stuff and it'll show like places and where people live and stuff like that. So I don't want to do that. Enjoy the goofy random stock footage while I'm talking here and there. All right, so you got to move and the move is three months away. Let's start selling stuff right now. Do not wait until it is time to move. Let's start downsizing, get rid of stuff, and sell stuff as soon as you can. Now, there's a few different ways that I like to sell things. And on this move that I just did, I had more luck on Craigslist than I did anywhere else. I don't mess around with Facebook Market, but if you're on there, you're welcome to try it. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah, stay away from Facebook. But I also had some luck on OfferUp, even though it's a very frustrating service that is overly cautious. Whenever you're like, meet me near my house, they're like, oh, you use the word house, we're gonna block you. So be very careful if you're on offer, offer up and don't do any personal information, email addresses or phone numbers. Just say, hey, let's meet somewhere in public and then say where, that's how you have to do offer up. How do you figure out what to sell? You know, because a lot of us are super attached to, to many of our things, but we have way too much junk. Well, I'm gonna recommend that you throw away most of your stuff. I know it sounds crazy and you're thinking everything in your place has value. You're like, what about this dongle adapter? I could sell this for, this is like worth $11. I should sell this, right? Okay, maybe if it's small and you can put it on eBay, but you don't have a lot of time. You've got to get ready to move. You got a broken light bulb right here. You've got it, it was in a drawer. Do you need that? Throw it away. Stop being ridiculous and throw stuff away. Get some big contractor bags. That's what they're called. They're called contractor bags. And you can put like lumber in there. They're, they're big, thick bags and just throw stuff away. So here's what I do three months ahead of time. I go through and just look at literally everything and decide what I want to throw away and immediately just put it into a bag. I threw away a lot of stuff. It felt weird, but I feel so much better now. And then I keep some post-it notes with me while I'm walking around. And if I see something that's worth maybe a couple hundred dollars, like a, I don't know, an old tablet or a phone or just something that's decent, a microphone, who knows? Something that I think I can sell for money. I sold guitar, I sold monitors, like 11 of them, because I had too many. I put a post-it on all the stuff I want to sell so I can come back by and take photos of that. 
So then you need to, you know, make sure you have a sort of a neutral area. I use like a nice empty spot of a wooden floor with a just a plain backdrop that's near a window. And then I take my photos during the day so I don't need any special lighting. Just while the sun is out coming through the window, I snap photos with my phone of all the different angles and stuff like that. And then I put them for sale online. If you have time to do this, it can really be helpful. I was able to sell the couch, the kitchen table, the chairs, the entire uh, guest bedroom suite set, the mattress, the bed frame, the side tables, the lamps, everything. I sold all of it. So I sold so much stuff, shelves, whatever, just put it all online for sale. And doing this three months ahead of time is going to help because you're going to have a lot of idiots who flake who are like, hey, I want to come by on Thursday. Can I come by on Thursday? They don't, they don't show up. And then like four days later, they're like, oh, hey, is that still available? And you're like, Ugh. You're gonna have to deal with a lot of that. It's, it sucks, but getting rid of stuff sucks less than keeping it. You think you could just move without getting some stuff? You are mistaken. First off, you're gonna need boxes, lots of boxes. I got these, and this was enough for me. 30 different boxes here. Uh, you may need more or less, depending on how much stuff you have. Everything goes into a box. Everything, everything, everything. You, you don't need to be you know carrying like a handful of stuff that's like a few cords, a hair dryer, and a lamp. And you're just like squeezing it and you're just gonna go throw it into the truck. You're crazy. No, 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 no. Everything goes into a box. Everything. This will make your move so much better. You might think, but then I'm gonna have a million boxes. Yes, you're gonna have a million boxes. And as soon as you open one at your new place, you can tear it down, flatten it, and put it in the hallway or put it by the door so it's ready to go. Everything, 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 everything goes into a box. You're like, okay, but I've got some like clothes and stuff that I don't want to put into a box. Okay, well, there's, there's other solutions here. You want something a little bit easier, maybe some of your linens or even plates and stuff like that. These are actually very handy. They're easy to store stuff in. They're a little more expensive, but if you're going to go for something like this, make sure you get the ones that have the straps that go all the way around the bottom. See that there? There are some that just have straps that are, that are affixed to the top. And if you put stuff in there that's too heavy, the seams or the, the stitching can come off and they can rip and you can drop. Probably okay, but I would only really use that if it wasn't too heavy. Otherwise, grab this here because it goes all the way around the bottom to give it full support. These are actually pretty cool. They're similar to like a big, one of those big blue Ikea bags or whatever that you get, um, except, you know, they have a, a zip top. Now, when it comes to just clothing and stuff, you can actually fold your clothes and, or just you know, fold them over and put them into one of those contractor bags as well. That's an option, but you want to, put stuff into other containers. So instead of carrying a million little things, you're carrying just a few big things. Now, when it comes to tape guns, if you want a tape gun, I highly recommend you get one. Just they're good to have in general. This is the one for the money that I think is the best. It is for the two inch rolls of tape, which we have right here. Your box packing will be so much better. And then make sure you get some, some Sharpies, you know, get one of these nice big fat. I like these big fat Sharpies because you can turn them on their side and, and, and right like this. And they also have a fine point when you're, when you're going sideways. So these are cool. Label every box. Make sure you write the contents on every box. And if it's something that has a lot of weird stuff, I will sit there and write down every single weird thing that's in there. If it's just like photo albums, just write photo albums, that's fine. But if it's got 20 different varieties of thing on there, write it all on there and write it on a couple different sides. I usually will write the full list on one side and then on every single side, including the top, I will write just a summary really quick of what it is, you know, like random hardware stuff. It takes a little bit of time, but you're gonna save yourself so much frustration when it comes to getting to the new place and taking everything out of the box. Next up, you need some help moving stuff if you're doing this on your own. Now, while I do recommend using a moving company, we're not talking about that in this video. This device, this Costco 300 pound little dolly here, it's a folding hand truck. I used it on my last move and it helped so much. The, the ability for it to become a dolly and also a hand truck was ridiculously useful. Be careful when you pick this up. Do not put your hands anywhere near these, these see these, these big wheels. When you're folding this thing up or like, you know, opening it up, those wheels will pop out really fast. So hold it back here, put your hand here, not up here. I got myself pinched once the first time and I learned my lesson. But anyway, this is super handy, it rolls great. I used it on a multitude of different surfaces and it rolled really well. So this is good. I wish it were a little bit bigger, but it can handle 300 pounds. So you can stack a bunch of boxes up on here and it will make your move much better. If you need to move furniture, I'm not a huge fan of these. They're floppy and all that stuff, but they can help a little bit. So 
you know, if you want to get this as well, go for it. But I was okay just using this. Next up, grab some packing blankets. Yes, you can get these with your truck. You can also get these with your truck. But the price to rent them is pretty high. And then you have to deal with the fact, like, are they clean? Do they have bed bugs? You know, that kind of stuff. It's a weird time right now. So I would recommend getting these. After you're done, you can give them away or keep them in a closet if you got room for it for the next time you move. But I recommend just grabbing some of these on your own. Then you don't want to mess up your back. So get some support straps. These actually go around the bottom of different things you're moving and then strap up so they put the weight on your shoulders. So that way you can use your core and not just have to rely on your brute arm strength. If you're a beast, then whatever. But for most of the people out there, I didn't actually have one of these. I wish I did. Uh, luckily, I'm a, I'm a beast, but I should have had one of these. They would have helped a lot to, to move. Most helpful thing that I had for this entire move, this. This was the most helpful thing I had. These things grip like crazy this particular brand this model it and they also work with your phone even though they're super grippy and they were really my hands didn't get blisters i was able to grip things way easier it was a night and day experience from trying to do this without gloves you cannot move without these i cannot stress enough how important it is to get some of these moving gloves they stick to the stuff and the other thing that was really interesting they would get covered in like cobwebs and stuff like that and just with a few shakes, the cobwebs were gone. They were like, I don't know, they were like filth proof. It was really weird. Like I would get junk all over my hands and then just shake them off. And like, as, I, as I'm working, they would clean themselves. I, it was really weird. You got to have these. Just make sure you get the right pair. Look down here in the description and stuff like that and see what the different sizes are. I was just fine with the large size. My hands are not huge and they weren't too hot either. Whenever it comes to y'all, there's always going to be some nonsense. And then, you know, it seems like it's going to be cheap, but there's always some garbage that nickels and dimes you and stuff like that. That's why I avoid them. Budget is similar affair. I usually end up with a dirtier truck for some reason whenever I use them. However, there's one company that I've never had a bad experience with, and that's Penske. Their trucks are slightly more expensive, but at the end of the day, once everything is said and done and you're finished and you've turned your truck back in, the, I've found that there's not a lot of hidden nonsense. There's not a whole bunch of extra fees and stuff like that. And I usually end up paying a little bit more, but I would gladly pay more for Penske because the frustration factor, the headaches and stuff like that, so much better. Plus, I like the way they do their trucks a little better. The deck on the back of a Penske truck is higher than the deck on the back of most other trucks. So why is that good? Why is it good to have a higher deck? Wouldn't that be more difficult to load and stuff like that? Well, for one thing, the higher deck means that the the uh, all the stuff you're going to put in there, it's above the wheels. So you don't have these huge wheel wells inside. You know, when you're trying to put like a bed in there and there's this big hump, you know, like this big cutout where the wheel is supposed to be, it's annoying. With the Penske truck, it's just a flat surface. Now, it's a little bit higher, but there is a ramp. And the other thing I actually like about it being higher is the fact that when I'm loading boxes and stuff, it's right about the height where I want to put it down. Whereas with the U-Haul, uh, or some of the stuff that has a lower deck, I usually walk up with my boxes and then I have to hunch down to set the box into the truck. The Penske, I can stand upright and just put the box into the truck and slide it back. So what I generally do while I'm loading is I'll put a whole bunch of boxes into the Penske. Just you know, pick them up, put them in there, and then I'll climb up into the Penske and arrange the boxes. So I found that to be a really, really useful method. And then, you know, whenever I need to get the big stuff out, I can get the hand truck and use the ramp. But I cannot recommend Penske enough over the other options that you have in the United States. I'm not sure what they have in different places in the world. So maybe disregard this if you're in Botswana or somewhere and you have different options. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about picking a place to move. I know it sounds weird because this is a video about moving but I think we should talk about this for just a minute. There are, you know, like sometimes you have to move and you want to move to a certain area of town or whatever. Let me give you a couple tips on that. What you want to do first is go to an area of town that you think you may like and park and walk several blocks in all directions. Just walk around. Even if you're like at some weird main 
beach town, some tiny little town, get out and walk that neighborhood because what's gonna happen is you will get the vibe of that area. Let's say you're walking around in like, God forbid, suburbia, and you're walking down these like streets and stuff like that, and people are like giving you nasty looks, or maybe one of them says something derogatory or something, or opens their window. You know that's not a nice neighborhood. You know that they're not accepting and friendly of who, you know, whoever you are. If, on the other hand, you're walking in that neighborhood and someone comes out and they got their dog and they're like, oh, hi, how are you? What, what, your, what are you doing? Uh, and you tell them, oh, I'm looking around this area and they give you some tips and stuff. Maybe it's a nice and helpful area. Maybe it's a cool area. So just go and get a vibe of some of those places. That's not always going to happen. This is especially true when it comes to moving into cities, because when you find certain blocks, you can like walk around, see what shops are available and start to think, OK, if I need vegetables, if I need eggs or if I need milk or something, how far am I going to have to walk to get it? Am I going to have to go get in my car? Then what's the point of even moving downtown? That kind of stuff. So just get a feel for the area around you, or the area around some of the places that you really like. That's one of the things that I did was I would look at places and be like, okay, this place here, this is uh, interesting looking, but I don't know uh, the area around it. So I would literally go park here and just walk around the area and be like, oh, cool, there's a little grocery store here. I'll oh, check this out, a little dive bar, coffee shop. Okay, what else is here? I got some, you know, used bike stores, whatever. I don't know, This, if it's something you like, whoa, a used video game store, D&D store, this is my kind of neighborhood. And you start to talk to some of the people in there and they're really cool. Maybe that's a good neighborhood. So just do that. It's It's simple but it can really help you decide like exactly where you want to live and it's say like you get there and you're like okay this place is too expensive but i like this neighborhood you can start to look for other things in that area and it'll help you along while you're trying to figure out where to go we're going to get ridiculously nerdy with this next part this is what i do and some of the people i talk to are like that is way over the top and then they try it and they're like this changed my life so this is a tip that i'm going to give you that requires work, but it is so worth it. Let's say you've narrowed it down to two or three different places and you're not sure which one is going to be the best for you. You've gone to look at two or three different places and you're trying to decide between those places. Well, you can start to visualize how something is going to work specifically for you. All you have to do is go and see if they have a floor plan. And if they do, well, you can start to lay your stuff out inside here and figure out, you know, how it's going to fit. So I'll cover that in the next video. I'm gonna make a specific video showing you how I take a floor plan or multiple different floor plans from different places, use a grid, and then start to put your furniture into this. Like I said, it takes a little bit of work, but it's so worth it. So stay tuned in the next video where I show you how I've created a grid, how I've created all of my stuff, and how I've allowed myself to move stuff around and position it inside here, just like I'm playing The Sims or something like that. And then we can lay these out and see if they're gonna work for all of our stuff and see if they're gonna work for what we wanna do with the space. It helps so much and it's why I decided to go with one place over another and I'm so happy that I did. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring with Rocksmith Plus. Check them out in the, you know, down in the description. And also don't forget that we do have several things for sale on epicpants.com. Those details will be in the description as well. Thank you.